Hello and welcome to IT Pro TV's 12 Days of IT, where we're unboxing 12 different IT gadgets, then giving them away. If you haven't already registered to win, head over to itpro.tv slash 12 days to sign up. Then tune into IT Pro TV's very first YouTube Live on Friday, December 11th at 2 p.m. Eastern to see if you are a lucky winner. Now, you won't want to miss a day, so be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications. All right, today's the 12th day of IT, and that means Don will be unboxing a Turing Raspberry Pi cluster board. Don, take it away. Thanks, Zach. I'm really excited about this one. Our 12th gift is a Turing Pi. Now, if you've never heard of a Turing Pi, it is a Raspberry Pi cluster board, and it is phenomenal. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to go ahead and get this open. Uh, it is packaged really well. You know, you've got your styrofoam that's kind of protecting it from getting damaged in shipping. Uh, and inside, we're going to have a static bag that's actually wrapping up the board. So let me pull that out of the case so we can actually get in here and see it. All right, now that we've got it out of the box, you can see that's all that's in there. It's just one big old circuit board with seven slots on it for those Raspberry Pis. So let's take a look at what we've got. I'm gonna get this packaging out of the way and we'll take a look at it. All right, so first off, it lets us build a cluster out of seven Raspberry Pis. Now, Raspberry Pis are normally independent cards but they make Raspberry Pi compute modules, CM3s, and what they are is an entire Raspberry Pi in a memory stick form factor, like an SO DIMM. And so we can pop seven of those right in here to build an awesome cluster for messing around with like Kubernetes and Ansible and all sorts of other cloud and, and rapid deployment technologies all in one single form factor. Now, let's talk about the board itself for a moment. There are some things that you're gonna need to really get this going. So the first thing you'll notice is that it didn't come with a power supply. No power supply in the box. How am I gonna power this thing on? Well, it does take a standard power supply or you can use an ATX power supply. You might have something laying around the house that you can use. In fact, right over here, I just happen to have a fairly standard power supply uh, that I can pop right in there and now we'll be able to power the board and get going. So really good shape there. Another thing is you'll notice the empty battery socket on there and that's for the real time clock. If we get a kind of close up on that, you'll see that's that standard RS2032 type battery that you find in a lot of computers for the real time clock. Anytime you're dealing with a cluster technology like this, you wanna make sure the clock stays accurate. We'll need a battery. So um, that's a pretty common battery. In fact, so common, I've got one laying right here. So I'll go ahead and pop that in. Uh, so we're good there too. Uh, let's see, a few other things. I am currently resting this board on top of the styrofoam that it came with. That's probably not a good idea. Some styrofoam, depending on how it's manufactured, it can actually be conductive and in fact, I've seen videos where people put them on top of the static bag and don't realize that static bags are actually conductive too. So if we're gonna operate this, we really need to stand it off to protect it to make sure we don't ground anything out. Now it is a standard ATX form factor, which is really cool. So maybe you've got an ATX case laying around or I have this little plexiglass type thing that I use that has some offsets on it. So we can come in and mount the board right to that. And you can see here where the holes in the Turing Pi actually match right up with that board. And now it's in there and it's not quite secure. I need to put some screws in it. All right, now our little project is shaping up. We've got our Turing Pi. It's mounted on a nice plexiglass board. I can set this down, get going. Don't have to worry about it shorting out. Plug in my power supply. I've got my real time clock going, but I am kind of missing something important. I've got seven SO DIMM slots along here just waiting for Raspberry Pis. And if I'm gonna do a cluster, I'm gonna need at least two of those. Otherwise, this board's not gonna be terribly useful. And you know what? Again, I just happen to have seven Raspberry Pis laying right here alongside me, uh, which is great. Like I mentioned earlier, these things are in an SO DIMM form factor. So they look kind of like laptop memory, but they've got that ARM processor right there. Depending on which model you order, they might have memory. They have one gig of RAM, and this particular model has 16 gigs of eMMC mounted on it. Now, it's important that I mention that because they've got 16 gigs of memory on them, but you can buy a compute module without any flash memory at all. And in that case, you would need to use an SD card. Well, if we take a look at the side of the Turing Pi, they thought about that. There's an SD card slot right along here, one for each of the Raspberry Pis to be able to give it flash memory. I'm not gonna need that because my compute modules already have it. And you can even do USB storage. If you look at the back, there's eight USB ports here. 
those are mapped to some of the different nodes. The very first node gets two USB ports, and then after that, it's the even numbers, two, four, and six. They all get two USB ports each. So that's all along the back. But now I can take this, and I just need to go through and throw my Raspberry Pis in there, and we're gonna be ready to rock. There we go. All right, we've got seven Raspberry Pis in there, ready to cluster, ready to throw power on them and get them going. I've had a chance to work with boards like these and they are a lot of fun, a great way to learn without having to leverage cloud technology. You can do it all right here. Now, if there is one complaint that I have about this board, it's that its networking module can get a little bit hot. It basically has an eight port gigabit switch right here in this chip. You can see that, uh, that little chip right there and boy, does it get hot. Hot. Imagine eight network adapters all running side by side. That's effectively happening inside of that one piece of silicon. I really wish they had put a heat sink on that. That would have really helped with heat dissipation, but heat sinks are not exactly rare. Again, you might have a heat sink laying around. I just happened to, so I'm gonna peel off this little sticker and we'll throw that on there. This one has the heat capacitor, or dissipative, whatever uh, adhesive on it. So I can take that and just pop it right on that chip like so. There we go. And let me show you guys that on the little camera. There we go, instant heat sink. So now we get some good heat dissipation and you can let this board run for hours on end and it is gonna do just fine and you won't burn your finger just because you touched the board. All right, well that is our unboxing. We've got a Turing Pi up and running, fully populated with seven Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3s, ready to cluster, ready for Linux, Kubernetes, whatever it is that you want to learn, you can throw it on there. All right, back to you, Zach. Hey, I was told there'd be a pie. Thanks, Don. Would you like to win that or any of the gadgets from the 12 Days of IT? Well, then head over to itpro.tv slash 12 days to sign up. Tune in later today at 2 p.m. Eastern right here for a YouTube Live and see if you're a winner. Good luck and happy holidays.